Welcome to the Top of Mind podcast from Altos Research. This is the show where we talk to real estate industry insiders and experts about the trends shaping the market today. Enjoy the show. So tell us about Ginger. Tell, tell us, give, give a little a backstory to the, to the listeners about who you are and, and your current role at Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, so nice to be here today, Mike. I'm Ginger Wilcox. I'm president of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, and I'm about eight months in. I had the privilege of being able to uh, step into Sherry Chris's former role as she as she she was with a brand for 15 years. So I'm very excited to be here. I've been in the real estate industry for a very long time, navigated a lot of different roles uh, from truly a home point and many others. So yeah, and, and so you're now as president of Better Homes Gardens. Uh, it is a big national brand, part of the Anywhere family. Correct. Um, and uh, and so. Like I'm interested today in like learning about the market and what you see from the front lines uh, and running a, a a brand like Better Homes and Gardens. So, so tell me a little bit about Better Homes and Gardens as a real estate brokerage and, and the structure and why it's cool and like that kind of thing. So Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate has um, about uh, 420 offices, and we are a global we're a global brand. We were founded in, in 15 years ago. Last year, we celebrated our 15-year anniversary, and we have a very unique connection because we're affiliated with Better Homes and Gardens, and that is uh, something that's quite unique. Many people don't realize that Better Homes and Gardens is not just a print magazine or a cookbook. It has a very strong digital presence. About three years ago, the um, Better Homes and Gardens was acquired by a company called Dot Dash. Meredith. They are the largest digital publisher in the world. And so the readership for um, Better Homes and Gardens is nearly 50 million readers a month. And we have access to that across both digital and print properties. And it really gives us a unique connection with consumers because consumers globally know know our brand. They like us. They trust us. And that's very important in today's, in today's climate. So tell me about this brand. So Better Homes and Gardens is a, is a brand like I know, but I don't I, like Maybe I'm not the target audience, but but like the tell. So it's an old brand, right? It's been around forever as an old magazine. Um, so so what is it like? What what's it mean now? Like how what, how does that? So 50 million uh, readers. Uh, reach your consumers. What else does it? Like, what else does it mean? What else should I know about that? Well, it's Better Homes and Gardens is really iconic. It's an iconic brand. It's globally recognized, and it really truly has been in people's homes. There's been 40 million cookbooks sold, and so when you think about that, that's oftentimes right. people will say that's oh, how you know it. They that's recognize the cookbook, um, but it has really evolved. And I like to say that true icons evolve, and and certainly the Better Homes and Gardens brand has evolved over the over the last hundred years. Uh, they actually celebrated hundred years in in people's homes of, about a year and a half ago. So um, when you, when we think about that access from a digital perspective, it is a highly digitally focused brand now, yeah. and it's all about lifestyle and inspiration. It's where people go to get inspiration for their homes and. Okay. Interestingly enough, when you think about who the decision makers are when you're doing a real estate transaction, it is oftentimes uh, it's oftentimes the women that are, are making a lot of those decisions. And the reach with the um, the female demographic across the United States is, is enormous, and it really is well known by by most Americans. And yeah. that gives us a really unique opportunity. This this month, we the the magazine just dropped, and it is the owning it issue, which is really thinking about how do we connect that lifestyle, lifestyle and inspiration with what we do every day, which is real estate. Okay. All right. So I, I get it, right? And so I said old brand. Uh, maybe I should have said established brand. Established. What's That's old right. is new these that, days. There right? you go. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's some uh, benefit in that. Okay. So um, how many agents? Uh, we have about 12,000 affiliated agents. 12,000 agents and, and uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so... Uh, it's now April 2024. We just had 23 was a crazy year, and you came in in 23 to be the president. So, uh, so tell me what the market's looking like. What are you seeing on the front lines right now? Like this spring? Like, tell me about what the tell me what you're seeing. Uh, so obviously, we're in a well, I like to call it a complex market, and. There's uh, there's obviously a lot of challenges that are facing our industry right now. We we continue to have 
interest rates, we have housing inventory, and and obviously some of the the regulatory uh, challenges that have been coming up. And for for better homes and gardens, we are really focused on continuing to help our agents evolve, and that's that's a big focus of mine as well. And and thinking about how do we make sure that we're preparing our agents for for what what the future holds. And you know, quite frankly, there's a lot that we don't know right now. There's right. a lot that's really in flux, and I think that there's been a lot of headlines that create alarm in our industry and it's really too soon to tell what some of these some of these um, changes are going to be coming down the pipe but the more that we can prepare our agents and ensure that and our brokers to ensure that they have the, the tools and resources and information available as soon as we can get it um, has become a really big deal for us okay so that look give me two questions one is uh, I'm interested in, like specific things that you're seeing for agents or you like here's where the agents need to go like that you can see right now um and and i'm also interested and i'm sure that there's legal restrictions about what you can talk about for uh, sure. but for sure. but tell me how what you see for navigating the the next phase because there's obviously some next phase of uh legal and compensation and stuff going on so tell me about what you see the next phase has happened and, and like how like how the world the the, the u.s home buyer market is going to change how many your vision is so um first of all i'll say that that you know anywhere was really at the forefront of being the first to settle on these um seller commission lawsuits and right okay and so that's, settled to to get it like done and it, it's um we don't have our final settlement yet. We're expecting that uh, to happen at some point this year, and we're we're still marching towards that. So that's that's um, that's key. And I think that where our focus has been on doing what we can to make sure that we're protecting the interests of our affiliated agents and brokers, and that uh, by being the first to to take that step was a was a key key step in that. And we'll continue to be looking for ways we can advocate for our agents as and so the future. So so protecting those means like. There's there was one big headline lawsuit, but there's a gazillion other things and state level stuff going on. And does it is does that mean like the yeah. the we prevent copycat like stuff like death by a thousand cuts kind of thing? Is that I would so the way that I would say it is that we're we're always looking on how we can ensure the best interests of our of our affiliated agents and brokers and. Uh, whatever the issue may end up being, that's where, where our focus is. Obviously, in this instance, we we were able to reach a preliminary settlement. We were the first there um, to be able to do that. And, and one of the benefits of working with a company like Anywhere is having the power of our scale to be able to think about how do we ensure that um, our our brokers and agents have somebody fighting on their behalf. Got it. And um, so I, I, I could understand uh, that this kind of lawsuit thing actually shifts power to the bigger brands. Kind of feels like that. Yeah. Uh, the folks that can do that legal protection and things like that. Well, I would say that it, you know, I, I've been saying to, to our network for a while, now's the time for the professionals. And we, it's for a while, transactions were super easy. There were a lot of them. And it didn't require the same level of focus and interest. And whether it's a professional agent or a professional broker, the, the level of expertise, um, training, and knowledge is, is continuing to, to grow. And I think that that gives us an enormous benefit because we have the ability to be able to provide a lot of the tools and resources and training to the people in our network that, um, that a small broker sometimes on, that's operating on their own don't, doesn't have the ability to do. And we give, them, we give back our brokers the ability of time because they're, they don't have to go through the effort of comparing the talking points and all of the different things. We're doing that on their own. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Do you have a vision about um, or like what you are recommending to buyer's agents in 2024? Do you, like, do you have a different message for, for, for folks who have been and, and how they're interacting with consumers? And then like, do you have a view of what's changing already for home buyers? Well, I think that, that we've we've seen for a long time that consumers are looking for more transparency okay. and they're and they're looking for trust. And so for people that are working with, with home buyers, they need to continue to ensure that they're providing that level of transparency and creating that trust with the consumer. So as we think about that, the uh, ensuring that our, our agents have the ability to put together their, their buyer presentations and that are really showing their value proposition of how 
the individual agent works with that that consumer at the end of the day. Uh, and we know that agents each offer different services and being able to articulate those services is really critical to anyone working with buyers today. Okay, so so articulating the services, articulating the vision. Um, and do you have you yet observed any change in um, in the the buyer behavior? Have you like you I can't know, really speak too much to that yet. I think we're still really early in, in terms okay. of, of what that looks like and you know, we obviously pay a lot of attention to the headlines far more in our industry than than sometimes that translates directly to the consumer. Right, right, right. We're in it, so we we know the news. We we know the news and we see that. So, um, you know, I, I would say that it's still really early, but certainly it's going to. Uh, it's our industry is going to have to evolve because it, times are changing. One of the things that really struck me at that moment that of the big settlement or the big, you know, the deal was the thing that struck me was how gleeful, like how at, like a hundred percent happy every consumer was like, it, they were ecstatic uh, that end. And I thought it was just so fascinating. Um, like so many people think that that's, that's like, that's, like it's it seems like they consumers think like it's a tremendous good deal for them you know it's it's really interesting because when i think about the um, what you see at the macro level is very different than you actually see when an agent is interacting with right. their specific consumer right and in so many cases you see that the satisfaction that they have with their agent is quite high and and we certainly see this in, in our network we have an incredible customer satisfaction ratings and yeah. It's it's more of the macro that feeling, but then when you say, "Would you, you know, how how does that relate to your agent?" It's it's very different, and That's, we have to remember that. That is so true. And it's there's a phenomenon that uh, Derek Thompson from the Atlantic calls uh, something like "everything sucks except me." Yes. Right. It's like it's like the economy sucks and it's tanking. Uh, I'm doing great. Or we see it in, in school ratings. The school system sucks. It's the schools are terrible. Yeah, but not my school is great. Yeah, 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 my schools and my kids go to a great school. Right. Um, and uh, and so we see here the realtors that suck. Uh, my deal is great. Like I'm perfectly happy with my realtor. Um, yeah, that's a really fascinating thing. So, um, do you? Uh, okay, so we haven't yet seen change in there. Um, if you were designing a real estate business, so agents coming into your, and, and tell me about this, and you're the mix of agents in your network, are they more experienced or are they like younger? Some some brands go for younger agents for growth. How does how does it work in in Better Farms Gardens? I would say that we are really balanced, and we have a combination of both. And I and I would say the same thing in terms of a the, the population of our broker owners as well. And what that that actually creates a really unique connection with our brokers that are and, and our agents and how they interact and connect with each other because we really leverage a lot of the we leverage a lot of the expertise that's in the whole network to be able to help educate and inform the rest of the network. Okay. Um, we recently had an all agent town hall and we brought in agents from around the country that are already in markets that are going deep into buyer representation and we had them talk about what they're doing and how they've handled a lot of these challenging conversations and so agents can learn directly from other agents that have been doing some of these things that they may not have been doing in their markets. Okay. And um, and are you guys growing? Of course we're growing. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you growing? Where's growth happening now? Uh, well, we're really focused on growth in, in a lot of areas. As a newer brand, we have a lot of opportunity for growth, right. which is great. We, I actually just recently brought in a new head of my servicing and operations, and she's going to be very focused on helping our existing affiliates be able to expand their footprint and, and kind of take advantage of the, the opportunities that present themselves. Right. And, you, and so are the affiliates, so the, those are like franchises, local markets, right. and some of them are big, like uh, Metro Brokers in Atlanta. Yes. Is like 2,400 agents or something like that, right? Yes, we just, um, we just signed a renewal with Metro Brokers. They were one of our first brokers, and they yes. joined us in 2009. We announced it yesterday. Oh, um, great. Um, Congratulations. Really, Keeping really that excited. going. Yes, yeah, keep that growing. Um, and so you've got those kinds of deals, but then um, are those, are there, is there a specific type of broker out there in the, in the, war, in the local markets that, that like, that you see a mechanism that you see them growing by or like, you know, what's working for the industry? 
So I would say there's two things that are really working to help them grow. One is is uh, we do a lot of work with them to be able to acquire other companies. And so um, as the work we do on the mergers and acquisition side is is quite extensive and being so, able to so you them. help the those brokers buy others to grow through acquisition. Absolutely. Okay. We do that, and then we also uh, we also support them on their recruiting efforts in order to be able to to drive you know new agents in their in their local markets. We do that through both um, training value value proposition um, and helping them understand the value of the brand. And it's really interesting right now. I'm seeing some some really. Um, significant traction with some of our brokers who are able to leverage the, the consumer connection. And we're, we're in an environment where obviously listings really matter and having that access to the consumer kind of uh, database that we have is, is really impactful for that. And they're able to leverage that for recruiting. So uh, speaking of that and, and ramping up listings and, and shifting some of those uh, technology side, uh, you, obviously, you have a background, technology background with Trulia and other places along the way. So tell me about the, your vision for technology and where that goes for the agent and for the, and for the consumer. Like, are there, are there benefits coming to the consumer, the home buyer and seller? What do, you, what do you see? Well, obviously, there's been a, a huge focus on making the transaction easier for the consumer. And we're continuing to invest in a lot of, a lot of that piece of it to make it easier for our agents to be able to serve the consumer in a great way. So I think we'll continue to see advancements there. Um, obviously, AI is a big topic right now and, and how that will be integrated in. And that's a big focus. You know, for us, we're really lucky because we have the benefit of having the broader Anywhere um, organization behind us. And so we have an enormous amount of investment into our product and technology that is thought about on the you know, cross-brand level. And that gives us an incredible ability to scale and also to be able to be able to evolve with what is happening in the technology industry. So um, some of the AI things are, are like you can see those coming down. Uh, are there places where you're like, you know what, that's bullshit. Like that, that technology is not useful. Like we're like or like overhyped or something like that that we should know about. Like, well, I think that that. In every technology cycle, there's always overhype, and when it what comes down to is how any technology is implemented to, to actually solve a real problem, and we're certainly seeing a lot of use of AI as we think about how agents are using it to market properties. But um, it, 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 so there's always there's always a hype cycle at the end of the day. Yeah. But when we think about where where our focus is, it's really about how do we ensure that we're empowering our agents and brokers with the tools that they need right now, whether it's managing their business or it's to reach consumers, and how do we continue to make the, the technology easier? Now, I, I obviously spent some time in mortgage, and I really am hoping that we see some significant enhancements on that side. Like mortgage automation, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it, oh. it, it continues to be a pain point, and, and it impacts everybody in the transaction, and it's much, much slower than we would have thought to, to actually change. Yes, right. right. Okay, so mortgage has been, is actually <laughs> slower to change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you uh, do you have, and this is a little on the spot we're seeing here at, at the, the conference, so do you have data on things like transaction speed or things like, uh, I don't know, cash buyers or whatever, things that might be happening that, that you can you can say this is underway? Um, I don't know if I, you know, I've, I've, I don't have the data at the tip of my fingertips right now today, um, but we certainly know that that cash buyers have been a big a big thing over the last couple of years, and it becomes easier, especially when you're looking at, at rising interest rates, and uh, there are a lot of them out there, but um, I don't know if I have any specific data that I can point to today. That's, that's shifting things. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, is, you know, we know that homes are spent fewer days on market than they used to. Uh, and some of that's market related, but is some of that technology related? Do you observe, like, can they close faster? Um, absolutely. I think that, that it, certainly deals can close faster. Technology does make that easier. We continue to focus on streamlining the transaction. And there's a lot of there's a lot of hurdles that have been in the way for a long time. And technology can make that easier, faster. Communication happens much quicker today. But um, what that looks like going forward will be really interesting to see if we can see sort of that monumental leaps because I don't I don't feel like we've had the the, the big shift that's going to, to fundamentally change in day one market. 
Okay. So okay. So like incremental change, but not not fundamental changes on things well, like that. And we have to remember that consumers, while we're all looking to make this process as easy as possible, the consumers don't really want to move in seven days. They're right. There's there's the factor of lifestyle that impacts the. Yeah, actual, it's a big deal. It's, it's a big still deal. a big deal. And technology doesn't fix that. And if you've ever tried to pack a house. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not something that you can do in, in a day or two. So there's the, yeah. the function of how much easier can we make it, but then there's the practicality of what actually works for a, a home buyer and a seller and how does that how does that connect to the actual days on market. Okay. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. See, um, how about international? Okay. What uh, what do we need to know internationally? Some of the things I'm thinking about are, you know, in the US. Everybody's got a 30 year fixed mortgage. That's not true in a lot of the world. Yeah. And so now if I'm on an adjustable mortgage, you know, in wherever, Australia, um, now my mortgage payments are higher than right. for the existing homeowners. So are you seeing things like, can you see different inventory trends? Can you see, uh, are the markets crashing anywhere? Anything that we should know? You know, I don't. I wouldn't say that that's the case today, and it's really interesting because I think that as we think about international, they really do look to what we do here in the U.S. But okay, um, it, it, it's a very different market, and it's very, it's very, it's very dependent on the country, the country that you're looking at. So you know, real estate is truly local. Yeah. So are you like uh, looking to build uh, new brands in like Santorini or uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, I'm looking to build them in all of the uh, the places I want to. Do you want to go visit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, we we um, we absolutely are looking to grow our international footprint, and that is when I think about what my charter is. My charter really is growth, and how do we grow the brand? And that's obviously here domestically, but also looking at where we can grow it internationally. And Better Homes and Gardens is a global brand for and sure. has reach in, in in many international markets. And we want to take advantage of. For us, we look at what that footprint of the magazine is, and 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 all of the the you know the digital publications, and we align our growth strategy very very focused on that too Got it. do you have a long-term vision of the housing market so you know you've had technology exposure you've had uh, mortgage and mortgage technology exposure and now you're running this big brokerage brand uh, what one of the things i like to ask my guests are what's the next decade look like do you have vision of what you think like there are all kinds of demographic trends. Is you know, the boomers are they finally going to sell their houses? Are they? And and, and it's really a two part question. It's like, what's your vision of that? And is, do you have specific insight from your role or any of your roles that have formed that that I should pay attention to? Well, I think that we we obviously have to look at the demographics because there's there's kind of two shifts. We've got this aging population that. Um, is sitting on a lot of equity in their homes and, and what does that look like and how do, how do they actually tap that to be able to feel retirement is, is a key thing. Um, and a lot of that population hasn't necessarily been moving. Um, and then and millennials have obviously been driving a lot of the market and that will impact housing over the next, over the next decade or so. What it, what it actually looks like is I think still to, to be determined. Yeah. And a lot of that is going to be related to what happens in, in the economy. Yeah. So you mentioned millennials mm -hmm. and uh, we have this dynamic of like millennials driving a lot of market. But I think in 2023, boomers were still the, the biggest home buyer. Yeah. There was still a net positive impact yeah. by the most. Uh, so... And in many cases, that's related to when we were talking about cash buyers earlier. Yes. Okay. Uh, for sure. Right. They're the ones who have cash. They have cash. And so that, that makes them less uh, resistant to some of the impacts of the interest rates. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and do you have uh, marketing insight or like you, do you, you're obviously a skilled marketer. So how, do you, what, what are you teaching people, agents about? like what to think about next uh, well, we're absolutely helping them think about uh, what what to do next and how to market to different different demographics which becomes key it's actually one of the benefits of, of better homes and gardens we have some interesting data and in, in partnership with um, better homes and gardens we have a tool for our agents that's called pinpoint and they're able to, to go in and access certain key information about the demographics in their local area and that you guys know because of the uh, decades of having the media brand Correct. with a lot of consumers, a lot of locals, so that you have specific 
demographic insight. Okay. Yes, which is really interesting because as an agent, you can go in and say, I, I'm interested in, in increasing my sphere of influence in this specific area. Help me find somebody that has kind of these these characteristics in this area. And we actually have a, you know, a database of consumers that we're able to, to give them access to. And then we actually provide the tools for them to be able to market directly to them. Fascinating. Okay, that's that's cool. Yeah. Um, and the 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 there are lots of signals I imagine in that data. For sure. Um, and and it may, it's like maybe it's an opportunity where it's like you know we have we can see it's cash buyer time so it's time to go market to boomers in that space this uh, is this is actually a big focus of mine uh, one of my key initiatives is is how do we better leverage our, our partnership with dot dash Meredith because we do have access to a lot of unique insights data to not only what what people are looking for in terms of their home but there's a, a big component of that through the magazine but but through the trends of, of the demographics of the readership. And, and so how we leverage that is, is a key part of our focus, uh, both from a marketing perspective, but insights, is, insights as you know, are, are king, and, and that is a key focus for the brand. Okay, yeah. well, that's terrific. I really appreciate your insight. I wish you so much luck in the new role and growing Better Homes and Gardens, and uh, thanks for taking the time today. And so Ginger Wilcox, everybody. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for listening to Top of Mind. If you enjoyed the show, I'd really appreciate leaving a nice review on your favorite podcast app that helps other people find us as well. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. See you soon.